Google Ads campaigns are made up of a collection of ad groups. The ad groups in the campaign inherit all the campaign settings, such as budget and location. In this video, you're going to learn how to create a campaign and use the appropriate settings for your search campaign. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to create a campaign and choose the proper campaign type. Show your ads to target geographies, choose a bid method, and then manage additional campaign settings. So to create your first campaign, you need to have a Google Ads account created. Then the first step to creating your first campaign is to choose the goal of your campaign. While this is an optional step, it will limit some of the choices you make in your Google Ads account setup. So this will ensure you work with the limited options, the ones that will help you achieve your goals. Now the second step is to choose your campaign type. If this is your first Google Ads account, it is useful to start with a search campaign only so that you are reaching people who are actively searching and looking for your products. Once you have chosen a campaign type and created your campaign, you then need to decide where would you like your ads to show. There are many location targeting options from zip codes to cities, states, and multiple countries. If you have a complicated location option, then you can use the map to visualize where your ads will be displayed. So for example, if you're a local business and you only want users who live within 15 miles of your business to see your ads, you can use the radius option and your address and choose the radius around your business. If you only serve a city, a state, or a country, then you can easily search and select that specific location. Now, in addition, you're going to decide if a user must be in your region to see your ad, or if you would like users who are outside of your target region, but show an interest in that region to also see your ads. So for example, if you're a lawyer and you're only licensed in a specific state, then you might only want to show ads to users in that state. Therefore, you can choose the option people in or regularly in your target locations and anyone searching for a lawyer in your state, but who does not regularly spend time there won't see your ad. Now, if you're a hotel, then you want users outside of your region to see your ads if they're searching specifically for a location. Now, in that case, using the option people searching for your target location or the default option of everyone, someone in your location or searching for it is a good option to use. So your bid method determines how bids will be set for the account. You can choose from automated options, meaning the bids are set for you based upon specific criteria you define, or you can use manual bidding, which means you need to set all the bids yourself. So manual bidding gives you by far the most control, but it also takes up the most time. So when you first start, you don't have any data yet. So you'll often focus on click-based metrics, such as automated bidding strategies of maximizing clicks or using manual CPC bidding. Now, once you have conversion data and you start to understand how various clicks convert, then you can revisit your bid strategy to use one of the automated strategies focused around conversions or return on ad spend. There are many additional settings to consider when creating your first campaign. The most important of these is budget. You'll enter a daily budget, but it is important to realize that Google can spend up to twice your daily budget on a given day, but they won't spend more than your daily budget times a day in a month over the course of that month. Then your language setting tells Google what languages your searches speak. Now, Google doesn't translate your ads for users, but if a user has a preferred language set to Spanish and then searches in English, you must have selected Spanish as one of your target languages while also having English keywords to have an ad display. So many of these additional options are situational and won't always be used, such as the start and end dates of a campaign. Now, many of these options connect to other features you can leverage in Google, such as audience targeting or dynamic search ads. So you can always revisit your campaign settings at a later time and change them. In addition, each campaign can have its own settings. So you might have one campaign with one set of settings, 
and another campaign that uses completely different options. First, go to the Google Ads website and create your first campaign. Choose your target location and languages for the campaign. Then, pick a bid method you want to work with. And then, optionally, you can adjust other settings if you don't want to use the default options. After doing so, you'll have your first campaign configured. An ad group is a collection of keywords and ads. The first step is to choose keywords that will cause your ads to show. So in this video, we're going to show how to choose keywords and how keywords can match to search terms and how to start organizing your ad groups. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to understand how match types work, create an ad group, populate your ad groups with keywords, know how to block your keywords from showing ads for certain terms, and then research potential ad groups and keywords. We're going to use two terms throughout this video that are important to understand keywords and search terms. A keyword is what you put into your Google Ads account, and then when the keyword matches the search term, your ad can be displayed. So the search term, also known as the search query, is what a user types into a search box in a search engine. When the search term matches your keyword, then an ad can be displayed. A keyword is what you will put in your Google Ads account. That's what the query is being matched to. So a search term is what someone uses in a search engine, and a keyword is what goes into your account. And when they match, then an ad can be displayed. Now we've used this word matching several times. Use a search in a large variety of ways, including many of the spellings, slight word variations, plurals and singulars, and so forth. You can't include every possible keyword you want to use in your advertising in your account. Thus, we look at how keywords can match the search terms. So we're going to examine each of these nuances of match types. So there's four match types we can use. The first match is known as exact match. Exact match matches to the same intent as the search term. So for example, if you have the keyword San Francisco to Chicago flights, now you can match to a search query such as SFO to ORD flights, as that's the same concept, or someone searching San Francisco to Chicago flights, your actual keyword. But you would not match to the reverse, such as Chicago to San Francisco flights, as it's no longer the same idea. Now next, we have phrase match. With phrase match, Google matches similar to exact match, except that more words and concepts can be added to the phrase, assuming the initial phrase is in the search term and the same as your keyword. So for example, let's say we have the term NYC hotels. If we're using exact match, we could match to New York City hotels, hotels in New York City. That's the same concept. But we probably wouldn't match to cheap New York City hotels or last minute New York City hotel deals because we've added more concepts. With phrase match, we would now match those concepts because the base idea, NYC hotels, is in the search term. And then the user can add more ideas. Now next we have broad match. With broad match, Google is matching to the same or similar ideas. So for example, let's we have that same word, New York City hotels. Now Google might match it to Airbnb New York or New York getaway deals. Neither one of those terms, including the word hotels, because they're similar concepts. So with broad match, you may match to additional terms that are similar in meaning to your keywords, but don't have the same idea to them. Now there is a subset of broad match known as modified broad match. With modified broad match, you can put a plus symbol in front of one or more of your broad match words. And then when the plus symbol appears, Google's gonna look at those words and they're gonna match them very closely towards the search query. And then other words are matched with similar intent. So for example, let's say we have plus red shoes. So what we're saying is the color matters, but not the footwear type. So we can match to red shoes, red sandals, red sneakers. They're all some sort of red footwear. 
Now, if we reverse it, we could say red plus shoes. In that case, you might match two pink shoes or red shoes or green shoes, but you shouldn't match two red boots because boots and shoes are not the same concept any longer. So when thinking about getting started with keyword match types, modified broad is a really good one to start with along with exact match. An ad group is a collection of keywords and ads. So we first need to put keywords in our ad group so we understand what's gonna trigger our ads and then we'll create the ads later on. So you have two options when creating your first ad group. You can either conduct keyword research right on the screen as you're creating an ad group and save keywords right to that ad group. Or you can go to the Google Ads Keyword Research tool and you can research a lot of keywords and ad group concepts at once, organize them in the tool, and then save your research data to create multiple ad groups. Now, if this is your first account. It's useful to do some research and add keywords to your ad groups to get an idea right, of how ad groups function. Once you've created an account before and you understand the process, then it's easier just to save your first ad group, even if it's blank with no information, to just quickly go through the setup wizard, then go to the research tool, do your research, and then populate multiple ad groups from the single tool at once. Now when you're adding keywords, think about how specific the keyword is to what you sell or the services you offer. Uh, for example, if you're an outdoor retailer who sells outdoor adventure gear, you might be tempted to use a keyword like boots, as many backpackers and hikers prefer to wear boots when they're out hiking. However, the word boots could describe rain boots, snow boots, work boots, and other types of boots. So using a keyword such as hiking boots is much more specific and will bring in a lot better traffic for you than the more general keyword just boots. Now, in addition, there are times we want to block our ad from showing for certain terms. So these are known as negative keywords. Negative keywords stop your ad from showing if your negative keyword is in the user search term. Now you can only add negative keywords once you've completed the entire setup wizard. So if this is your first ad group in account, you're gonna to have to go back to the ad group to add negative keywords. In addition, once you're advertising and getting data, you'll see a lot of search terms causing your ads to show. If you see search terms you don't want to show for, then you can make them negative keywords. Now, always be cautious about just adding negative keywords without any data. For instance, a lot of companies don't sell free things, so they add the negative keyword free. However, if someone's doing a search for your product with the term free shipping, and you have free as a negative keyword, your ad can't show. And if you offer free shipping, you want to show in those instances. The Keyword Planner tool allows you to easily research keywords, organize them into ad groups, save the ad groups to your account, or get some click and budget forecasting for a set of words. So the keyword research tool is a very useful tool just to explore the overall potential reach and budget and bids of keywords. Now as keywords and ads should be highly related to each other to ensure your advertising is relevant, you want to create ad groups that have small sets of highly related keywords so that the same ad is useful for every keyword in the ad group. So as you use the keyword research tool to conduct your, your research, you want to save keywords to different ad groups based upon the keywords being highly related to each other and keywords that can share the same ad and landing page. If you're adding a keyword and you look at the ad and landing page and it doesn't accurately describe the keyword, then you want to create a new ad group in the tool, move the keyword to a new ad group so you can have more relevant ads for that. So spending some time in the tool will really help you plan your ad groups and even campaigns so you can see the overall keyword potential for your account, plan budgets, and then mass create multiple ad groups just at one time. Go and create your first ad groups and add keywords to it with the match types and it's suggested you start with exact and modified broad in most cases. And then you can go to the keyword planner tool to research your keywords, research your ad groups, 
and then add those to your account from the plan. Now, in addition, you can also download the keywords from the tool into a spreadsheet program and then organize them to create your ad groups. And as you're doing your research, if you come across really obvious negative keywords, then add them to your account as negative keywords. When you think about your Google Ads account, the ad is the only part of your account that a searcher actually sees. Your ad serves as a bridge between what a user is trying to learn and your website. Therefore, the ad should be reflective of the keywords in the ad group so it's relevant to the search term, along with containing compelling reasons for a user to want to click on your ad and visit your site. So in this video, we're going to examine how to create effective ads. By the end of this lesson, you will know the components of an effective ad, know how to create ads within your ad group, select the proper ad rotation settings, and finally view your ad. The first thing to think about is that you need your ad to be relevant. Search is conducted by users trying to find a solution to a problem or an answer to a question. So you want the ad to be relevant to a user when someone does a search since there's so many options on the page. There's ads, organic listings, sometimes a knowledge box, image, videos, or other content. You need your ads to stand up, wave its hands, and say, I can answer your question. So one way to do this is to mimic the user's intent by including keywords in the ad. Another is to echo other user information, such as location if you're targeting a small geography. A user is searching for answers. That answer might be they need to download a white paper, visit your site, buy this product, or call your company. So the answers, what you're trying to accomplish, can be a commercial action that gets you new customers by helping the user find the answer to their question. So a feature is just a bullet point list of true facts about a product or service. A benefit is what a consumer gets out of that product or service, what it does for them. So for instance, my laptop, it weighs 2.8 pounds, it has an 11 hour battery life, it's got an 11 inch screen, right? They're kind of boring, but they're true facts about it, right? So those are features. Now, to make a feature into a benefit, something useful to the user, finish the sentence. It weighs 2.8 pounds. Ah, who cares? It weighs 2.8 pounds. So you can carry a laptop around all day without back and shoulder pain. It has an 11-hour battery. What does that mean? Well, it's got an 11-hour battery, so you can focus on work and not finding a power outlet. That's what the user gets. So when we look at why people buy from our companies, and how they go through the buying funnel. Early on, someone's looking at awareness, who should I think about, who should I deal with, and they're sort of focused more on, on the benefits. What do they get out of it? And we think about price comparing items, and we comparison shop based on features. That's why every site you see, you can sort by rating and prices and reviews and so forth, but we buy because of what it does for us a benefit. So while it's useful to change benefits and features of the buying funnel, if you're uncertain, focus on the benefits. What do you want someone to do after clicking on your ad? Right, the action tells them what to do. So a common call to action might be sign up for a newsletter, explore our products, shop now, buy now, learn more, call or download a white paper. It's useful to include a call to action in your ads and then use that same call to action on your landing page where the user goes after clicking on an ad. As they read an ad and saw a call to action, when you echo it on the landing page, the user is more predisposed to doing that same action again. Right? Ask yourself a question. Why should someone do business with you as opposed to all the other options on the page? You might have free shipping, you offer free consultations, you have an amazing customer service, you have free returns, you have low prices, you have a massive selection, maybe you have very credible, you've sold over a million tickets to something. Right? Think about what makes your company unique. How can you stand out from the crowd? And those search results full of options. Think about your offer, 
Think about your uniqueness to showcase that in the ad. A landing page is industry jargon. It's the page a user goes to after clicking on the ad. It does not have to be your home page. It should be a page relevant to your ad and the keyword. What did someone search for? So let's say you sell shoes and you have running shoes, you have hiking boots, you have sandals, you have flip flops and all these options. If someone searches for hiking boots, they don't want to see your home page. They don't want to see your running shoes page. They want to see a page full of hiking boots. Now, if I were searched for Adidas tennis shoes, I put in a brand name. I want to see Adidas tennis shoes on the landing page. So you want to link your ad to pages that showcase the product or your services that someone's actively looking for. Now, it's easy to think about this in e-commerce. E-commerce is well segmented. But if you're a local business, it's the same thing. If someone lives in Houston and they search for plumbing services, since that's a local-based business, they want to see a page that talks about plumbing services in Houston. If they were to search for bathroom remodeling and they live in Houston, they don't want to see the plumbing page. They want to see a page about remodeling companies and what you can do for them from someone who services that location. Then when your landing page answers the user's question, has their information, then it's easy for them to add a product to their cart if, or call the company, fill out a form. And so you can have commercial results, right? You can still make money and revenue from helping a user to find what they're looking for. So when ads purpose is to connect with the searcher to show them you can help them with the topic of their search and persuade them to take action with your company. This means the ad must be relevant. Right, we use the beginning part of the ad to show relevance. So the user wants to pay more attention to what we say. Now, once someone's paying attention, then you want to persuade them to take action with your company which can range in actions such as calling you, watching a video, or buying a product. So you often want to think about your offer and your landing page, page someone visits after clicking on the ad, when writing your ad. So any promises and content that you have in the ad are also on the landing page. So the ad should be useful, relevant, and persuasive for every keyword in your ad group. If your ad is not relevant for some keywords, those keywords should be moved to a new ad group with a new ad written that helps persuade users to take action when they search for those other keywords. So an ad group can have multiple ads in it. And your ad rotation setting is a campaign level setting, meaning it affects all the ad groups and the campaign that determines how Google rotates ads if you have multiple ads in an ad group. So if you're just starting out, you're trying to get traffic to your site, you're not paying a lot of attention to ad testing, there's an option called Optimize Prefer Best Performing Ads. And this is a good option for new users as Google's going to show the ad with the highest CTR, click-through rate, the most often, which helps bring traffic to your site. If you're focused on ad testing and you want all your ads to have an equal opportunity to compete in the auction, because you might be focused on different metrics, such as conversion rate or cost per acquisition. The setting do not optimize, rotate ads equally, is a setting you want to use. So you can use proper ad testing and all the ads have an equal chance to appear in the auctions. So the Google Ads Preview Tool will let you see what your ad looks like in any location, language, device, and so forth. So this tool allows you to see how your ad will look in those various conditions, and even with your ad extensions, which are additional piece of information that can go with the ad. The preview tool lets you see what your competitor's ads look like with that same criteria. So this is a good way to get an idea of how your ad will be viewed by searchers and the other option those searchers will have. So you can take this information and make sure your ad and offer are compelling compared to the other ads on a search page as the ad preview tool shows you what keyword triggered your ad and your ad for that exact search results. It's useful to search for the same keyword multiple times 
just to see if other keywords are showing on ads or if your competitors have multiple ads. So by taking a look at multiple times at this tool, you get a better idea of what's occurring for a search term on the search results. So whenever you want to see what keywords are showing in ad for a term, use the Google Ad Preview tool to see what the data looks like. For each of the ad groups you created, write two to three ads in an ad group. Note suggested you custom write the headline for each ad group, then you can create a call to action and a benefit message you use in the other ads on ad group as your second headline, and then maybe a benefit on the call to action as your third headline to see how the different ads fit together. Now, if you plan on watching your ad test closely, then use the rotate option in your campaign settings. If you're letting Google just optimize your ad rotation, then leave the default ad rotation setting, which should be set to optimize. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.